This is from my good friend. He's a rabbi, actually. His name is Sam Goldstein. I would assume it's Shmuel. Um, we're having a little discussion on Facebook about um, alcohol versus marijuana. And um, I just want to apologize for being, in your words, so bitter and so condescending. I'm really, really sorry. I am very young, you pointed out. I'm actually born in 77, not 84. I don't know how you misunderstood that. But it's on Facebook. You can just look at my birthday. But um, I'm young, and I'm, I'm a, I'm, I always tell people, you know, I'm a work in progress. I apologize. I'm just one person. And Hashem, if you wanted to make me a tzaddik, you could have. Like it says, Barat HaSadikim, Barat HaRashayim. And then uh, the author points out, anyway, that they have a tzaddik with Rasha, it doesn't, it doesn't actually say that, but the tiny is a whole other discussion. Alavai Benini is my maimon today occurrence. I wish I could be one day called a Benini. So I will work on myself. And, and your criticism, by the way, Leberetz, and I put this in the comments, says, Cherish criticism, for it will place you on true heights. This is quoted by the Rebbe himself in the Sefer he wrote called Hayom Yom, which is a thought, a Hasidic thought for every day, all quotes of the previous Rebbe. Uh, that's why in Hayom Yom, if it says, uh, My father said, it's the Rebbe Rashab, not the Rebbe Yitzchak, the Rebbe's father. Anyway, so here it goes. This is my bitterness and my condescension. It says, See, some people have some strange hang ups. Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyone who has done research can debunk these arguments. Oh, your legal friend, alcohol. While mundane, harmful substances that only mature base people would enjoy, like tobacco and alcohol, remain perfectly legal. Perfectly, I meant legal, it says clear. Uh, intellectually flawed on so many levels, it's truthfully not worth responding to with all due respect. Okay. Anyway, and then you, your thing, Rav Goldstein, is my favorite idea is that alcohol is for the base. Kiddush, Havdalah, Purim, please think. Um, okay, I just wanted to debunk the Purim myth. Uh, there's no chivas uh, to get drunk on Purim. And when you get drunk, obviously you're a rabbi, so you're not the regular class of people. If you look at the world's population, the rabbis represent 0.001% of them. You're, you're in a higher class, okay? I'll, I'll grant you that in a second. I came from the world of not being from, and I was by game a lot, by non-Jews. Alcohol is for the... When you drink, you know what they do now? When I was in college, they go out to these bars, they drink, and they begin, like, uh, start fornicating in the bars. In, in, in the place. They don't get to full uh, full on the uh, Tashmish, but they kiss, they, they make out in public places. Why? Because the alcohol. And same with tobacco. My, my point with tobacco is, it's it's a good, it's good. Same with alcohol. So all these things that Hashem grants us are good. It's everything in moderation. But alcohol, the reason people drink it nowadays, they're not the... Yeah, we have to make Kiddush on it. And and this is the, actually a very interesting thing, because alcohol is a known poison to the body. It has to go to the liver. It has to be digested. It, it's a known poison. But Hashem commands us to make it on, on, on wine. For those who can't, we make on grape juice. But um, the Rebbe was very clear on something when it came to mashka and drinking. He said four times you can say lechaim from a little tiny cup. That's the limit. It's actually, it's actually three times according, but some people like to make another story, version of the story. It's four times. Um, either way... Uh, the point being that um, alcohol is something that has to be treated with a lot of respect. There's the story, uh, the, it's, uh, it's in, you know that book the Midrash says, for, for Bereshis, when it talks about uh, Yain, because Pireh Das, how did it happen? There's one opinion, there was a grape that had alcohol in it, and they became shikr, and this is what they wanted to do. Uh, also, uh, Nayak and his sons, <laughs> it's a big Aveda what they did. He planted a vineyard, the first thing. He gets a lot of mustard from the Chachamim on this. I'm sure you know, you're a rabbi, I don't have to tell you the Torah. Um, what else? Alcohol. Alcohol leads to virility, generally speaking. Generally speaking. Okay. Now, um, the, the point is, it says that you drink one time, you become, uh, this is a, a medrash, you drink one time, you become bashful like a lamb. Two times, uh, it goes on to animals, and it says you drink four times, four times you drink, a, you have four drinks, you become brazen like the pig, something like this, a very hard lushen. And, uh, okay, it mentions there the, the dangers of drinking, it's, it's all over in the Torah, and you should know something, I know you don't uh, think uh, Muhammad was a prophet or a special man or anything like that, or maybe you do, I'm not sure, but, uh, he, but by them it's asr, it's completely asr, because they saw after so many years, what does alcohol do to a person? If you had a society that was alcohol-free, do you have any idea how much you would be able to accomplish? And I'm sure you're aware, even though you're a rabbi, you've probably looked at American history briefly. This was the constitutional amendment, banning the product, the, the sale of these products. Do you understand, if you can understand for a second, and I'll just break it down into, into layman's terms, what it takes to pass, to ratify constitutional amendment is, is, is support from three-quarters of the states. This is something that no one's even attempted to get a constitutional amendment passed in years. And it was repealed. It was prohibited. There's a prohibition. This is you can research it. Read prohibition in Google. You'll find that alcohol was illegal in this country according to the Constitution, that which governs the entire country. It wasn't state dependent. It was they made it a law. So what what happened was uh, they saw that they couldn't fight this battle. It was like an invisible battle. Like people were still like, I'm gonna get chicken. What am I gonna do? You take my alcohol from me. 
So when they saw that they, they couldn't do it with Poil Mamish, they couldn't uh, accomplish this goal, and in physical reality, then they repealed it. They actually added another amendment, and this was also very challenging, repealing the 18th Amendment. The 21st just repeals the 18th. If you want to look at the Constitution, you can take it out to check it out there. My point being is even the people in this land saw, and these are Puritans, with all due respect, I, I don't hold them in any, uh, they, they're, they're Christians really, they, they, they saw it as a dangerous chemical, it's a dangerous substance. Now, what happens when someone drinks too much? People beat their wives, people fornicate for no reason, people act like idiots, they become proud and, and arrogant and boastful, all of a sudden you, you're the king of the party. And, and uh, I had a friend from high school, we had like a, you don't have any yeshiva, but we have high school yeshiva quotes. So his quote was very funny, I think it was uh, Scott, Rose and something. Anyway, his quote was very funny. He said, do what you said you were going to do while you're sober. Do what you said what you're going to do when you're drunk while you're sober. Meaning, if when you're drunk, you're going to say, I ought to do this, I ought to do that. Do it when you're sober, and that'll teach you never to drink. Because you understand, you, you sound like an idiot when you become shikud. It's, it's a very, very serious thing. Um, now, when someone smokes marijuana, what happens? They become uh, aware of Hashem. All of a sudden, everything is beautiful, everything is magical, mystical. They want to do more, they want to dive, and they want to create, they want to they live. And... and Generally speaking, these are generalities from my personal experience. Everyone has their own personal experience. So if to you alcohol makes you more spiritual, so gesund. It's legal, thank God. It's one thing they haven't, the, the government still trusts us when it comes to this one little thing. But if it it been a get to, to, to marijuana, it's not legal. <laughs> What's the difference? And what kills and what doesn't kill? Drunk driving kills? People can see, I'm sure when they make it legal, have a warning. Please do not drive after smoking. Okay? But believe me, you can. It's not much less dangerous than alcohol. Alcohol makes you brazen. This makes you introspective. It's a much bigger, different experience. Uh, not, not to mention LSD, which is my... This is the one thing that... Uh, it was first synthesized in 1938. It wasn't accidentally ingested until a few years later, 42-43, by Dr. Hoffman himself. And then that was on the Rebbe's birthday, by the way, Adolf Nissen. Then Erev Pesach, three days later, he, uh, Erev Pesach, he, um, he intentionally took it in, 250 micrograms, and, and the rest is history. The famous bicycle, bicycle ride uh, through Switzerland, wherever it was. Uh, Brazil, I think. I don't know. And anyway, um, and it was legal and it was a wonder drug and everyone was using it and it was wonderful. And unfortunately, like the United States can ruin anything, they ruined this too. They brought it to the United States, they gave it to the intellectuals in Harvard, and Leary fell in love with it and he started giving it not just in the control groups that it was supposed to be given in, but to everyone. And it became a party drug and then went all to hate Ashbury in San Francisco and all of a sudden, and uh, you know, things like the Charlie Manson murders really uh, gave it bad publicity and all of a sudden it's illegal illegal, one of the most powerful and positive chemicals to ever be synthesized by human beings, the greatest accomplishment of mankind, illegal. I always say if this government was around when fire was invented, it would be illegal. What happened is at first you, you invent fire, you discover it, and it would go, this is amazing, heat, light, I can cook food, this is really great. Then one person would get really severely burned. And the government would come out, no more fire, us so you cannot use fire anymore, please turn off your fires, we're confiscating matches, we're confiscating uh, the, the, the flint rock, it's all coming off, please, no more, no more fire. So, uh, Rabbi, I, I appreciate your opinion. You're a rabbi, and I cannot argue with a rabbi, because I'm just a simple Jew. And I know you have makra and I know you do. And I know your makra is stronger than mine. I'm sure it is, especially now because it's illegal. And we have to do everything we can to, to, uh, to honor and obey the laws of the lands in which we live in. The Torah is clear on this. Although, generally, that's more for um, monetary disputes. But, but yeah, of course, it, without the government, people would swallow each other alive, it says. My point to you is, when it comes to a comparison between the drug of alcohol and the drug of marijuana, People are swallowing each other alive much more in alcohol than they are in marijuana. Alcohol also produces fights in bars, you should know. People, I had a, I was once in college, I, I never touched the, I mean, I never like fought, I was not a fighter. And some guy all of a sudden, like standing against the wall, and boom, pushes me. I was like, what? You know, I was like, fight outside, you know, take it outside. And take what outside? This guy shook it, he doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. I said, why did you push me? No answer, he can't even like enunciate words at this point, he's so drunk. Um, I don't know, your, your, your point of Kiddush of Dalla Purim, the Jews are about 14 million out of 6.3 billion. And in this, let's just narrow it down to this country, about 6 million out of 300? Point what percent is that? 6 over 300. Uh, take it out, so 3 over, three over 200. <laughs> it's not even worth getting into. It's, a very, it's a less than 1%, I think. So, um, I don't know. Don't, don't be so, um, when you're focusing only on your own group, there's a very negative word I don't want to say, but it's, it means that you think your group is the center of the universe. And it's not exactly true. The Jews are, we're supposed to lay on to the nations, but you look at relative to the world's population, we're very small, we're minute, we barely exist. So you have to understand something. These things, on a national level, your argument doesn't hold water, with all due respect to, to, to the rabbi. Um, I hope this helps. I, again, welcome any and all criticism. I will try to be less uh, bitter. Bitter is interesting. If you, when, when you type, you can't tell the tone. But I'm not a bitter person. Condescending, I'm sure I am. 
but I'll work on it. Thank you so much, and uh, may God Almighty bless you, Rabbi, in everything that you do, both uh, and physically and spiritually.